So, in this video, we'll see how DHCP works. To understand the need for DHCP, the first question to consider is how does a host obtain its IP? Because, as we already know, any host in the network will need an IP to route its traffic in TCP IP networks. Okay? One option is to manually assign it. Each operating system has its own method for this, and we're showing some examples in the slides, not all. However, this is not usual, particularly if the user is not familiar with networking aspects and related technical concepts. In this regard, DHCP automatically assigns IPs in a transparent way to users. So let's see how it works. Let's assume we have the following scenario with two subnets. In one of them, we have a DHCP server in particular it belongs to subnet A. One DHCP server will only reply to requests coming from its own subnet. When a new host joins subnet A, it will use the DHCP protocol to obtain its IP. DHCP is divided into four main phases. The first one, to discover the servers in the subnet. The second, to obtain offers from the available servers, because there could be more than one. The third is to request an IP, and the last one is to acknowledge the request and finalize the assignment. Let's see these phases in detail. The discovery phase is characterized by the DHCP discover message, which has the following format. The source IP is 0 .0 .0, 0.0.0, okay, because we don't know, we don't have an IP, and the destination IP is broadcast address because it needs to reach all hosts in the subnet. Apart from that, we have a transaction ID. After all, the server or servers, because there could be more than one, will answer to the whole network, because the host still doesn't have an IP, and will offer some kind of IP with a mask. Uh, this is the format of the DHCP offer with source IP.2, Destination broadcast, server ID is dot two. It could be different, but in this, in this case, it's the same. And it has the offer indeed. It's the your IP field, okay, which is the 102. It also has a mask and a list time. The list time represents for how long this IP assignment is valid. Afterwards, the host will usually request one of the offers previously uh, received. In this case, uh, the host is requesting the offer that has already been received previously by this DHCP server in the example, the 102. Finally, the server acknowledges that, that request and it also provides additional information such as the DNS server. Okay, in this case, it is assigning the requested offer and it assigns the DNS and configures the list time and so on. What happens when we have several DHCP servers? In this case, we are showing it with a diagram. We have one server here and another here, and this is the host requesting the IP. The DHCP discover message will arrive to all DHCP servers belonging to the same subnet of the host. In this case, both servers belong to the same subnet, and both of them will receive it. Both of them will eventually reply with an offer. In this case, uh, .2 replies first, but .222 will reply also. Okay? The IPs are different. In this case, you can see that this is offering this 245 address, and this is offering 102. The host will select the IP and different criteria could be applied, such as IP value, list time, and so on. And this will produce the request of a specific IP. So in this case, the specific IP is 102, and this request will arrive to both servers because it's broadcast. Although this previous message, discover, offer, and request arrive to the whole network, only one of the DHCP servers will acknowledge the IP. In fact, it will be acknowledged by the server that previously offered it from the very beginning. In this case, this 102 was 
offered by this server. One additional question is what happens when the lease time expires? Well, sometime before expiring, for example, some percentage of time before, though it could be configured accordingly, the host will request an IP renewal. And the procedure is based on sending the same message that when it requested the IP for the very first time. In this case, it is sending the same exactly DHCP request message and the same server will acknowledge in the same way. Okay, this 102. Finally, when a host no longer needs the IP, for example, it's been shut down or something like that, it can send a specific message to release the IP. So that it's uh, available for any other host that needs it and so on. And that would be it. Thank you.